Greetings and salutations, listener, and welcome to another edition of the Coco and Daltz podcast. And I'm not Coco. And I'm not Daltz. Hey, I got it right this time, which is pretty good. <laughs> so, listener, if you made it all the way through last uh, the last episode, you realize that I don't know who I am. But anyway, this week in this episode, Coco, what are we talking about? What did we just this very minute finish watching? So we just this very minute finished watching season two of Criminal UK. That's because today is the day that it was released on Netflix. Wow, hot off the presses. Season one was released this time last year, and we podcasted about that in episode 62. So if you want to take a look in our archives and see what we had to say about season one, please do. We'd appreciate the download numbers. Yeah. If you are new to the Criminal franchise, it's, like I said, a Netflix original series. It The first season took place in four different European countries, the UK, Spain, France, and Germany. The UK is the only one of those that got renewed for season two, and that's what we just watched. It's four episodes. They're each around 45 to 50 minutes long. The premise of the series is that it's called Criminal, so obviously it's law and Mm order-based. It takes place in one floor of a police station in in this case, London, because we're in the UK. Uh, The main two rooms are the interrogation room where the cops talk to the suspect or a witness uh, in a crime. And then also the room on the other side of the two-way mirror, uh, the cops watching the interrogation, looking up stuff to see like, oh, is that something they could have known? Mm-hmm. And then also ordering pizza too. Uh, right? Yeah, also ordering uh, takeaway. Yeah, and then also some action takes place in the hallway. You know, with the vending machines and the elevators and stuff. Mm-hmm. So transitionary. Yeah, exactly. So this is four episodes: cops interrogating bad guys or witnesses, <laughs> uh, adults. What'd you think? So uh, off air, we were discussing it, and uh, I said it was brilliant. <laughs> and you said, oh, really? So <laughs> Differing opinions coming up in this podcast, listener. Get ready for a tete-a-tete, listener. <laughs> um, so in this, in the four episodes that we watched, uh, I think in this season, they took the approach that they were going to defend the indefensible. And so two of the cases were, one was a rapist and one was a pedophile. And they... Uh, circled around those two and got to a resolution. I don't want to spoil too much of it, but it's going to be... Oh, I'm going to spoil when I talk about it. It's going to be hard to not spoil it. Um, But there were a lot of uh, conclusions made and also a lot of deductions made that brought us to a conclusion that you would not anticipate. And I thought it was brilliant because it was taking a contrary perspective. So... For example, in the case of the accused rapist, uh, you're thinking the guy's guilty the entire way through, and then we get to the end, and he's not. And Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. <laughs> and so you know it's something going on if I'm spoiling it. Um, and it was, it, was, it was amazing the way they did it. The, the writing and the tension and the drama and the outrage and the, the acting in this series is the best I've seen in... I don't know, in many series um, in a long, long time. And and the way it was carried out and the, the execution and the twists and the turns and, the, and like I said, the tension. And it's just a scene where people are sitting around a table. And it was just amazing, the writing. Um, but it really doesn't matter what I think because steam is coming out of Coco's ears. <laughs> so, Coco, what did you think of these four episodes of Criminal UK? Are, are you sure you're done? You can keep going. No, I, I, I'm actually off my game because I want to hear what you say <laughs> because I don't. anything that I say is just going to get tromped upon by your logic because I know that you're going to well, deliver I, the goods here. I don't want you to feel as though you can't have an opinion that differs from mine. I, I have a different opinion, but I don't think I'm going to be <laughs> as eloquent as yours will be. Okay, so I'm going to start with some nice stuff. Okay, good. Okay, so uh, the first nice thing I have to say is that the four... You like my shirt is what you were going to say. I do. Well, I bought you that shirt, so that's why. (laughs) Um, (laughs) The four guest stars in each episode, 
I thought they did a great job. Yeah. They were played by Sophie Okonedo, who apparently was nominated for an Oscar for Best Supporting Actress for Hotel Rwanda, which mm-hmm. I've never seen, so I was unfamiliar with her. I have seen that. Uh, I recognize her from somewhere, but that, and that might have been where it was. She's, she was great. Yeah, she was great. Uh, Kit Harrington played the accused rapist mm-hmm. in episode two. As soon as the camera got on him in episode two, I was like, is that the Game of Thrones guy? So I was not expecting to see him. And can I just add that yeah. the opening scene to that was amazing. Yeah, that was really good. The way he carried that for a good, I don't know, five minutes. Yeah. It was one shot of just him talking. And it was, that was just amazing. So anyway, carry on. Uh, in episode three, Sharon Horgan, who I'm unfamiliar with, apparently she created the HBO series Divorce. Oh. And then in episode four, uh, Kunal Nayar, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Apparently he's in The Big Bang Theory, which I have never oh. seen. Oh, that's so, right. <laughs> that is him. So each of those four guest stars did a really good job oh, in different ways. Fantastic. In very different ways. One of the things mm-hmm. that I loved about season one was that the guest stars in the first two episodes were David Tennant and Haley Atwell, and they were just like A++++. They yep. knocked it out of the park. Yep. But those episodes in season one focused so heavily on those two characters. And in this season, it seems like the writers kind of took a step back from that because even though obviously the accused, they're being questioned, they're a big focus in the episode, but there Mm -hmm. was more behind the scenes stuff. There was also more focus like on the cops Mm -hmm. and maybe a little bit of cop character development. Mm -hmm. So the guest stars were great, but they didn't overwhelm an episode. In season one, you're talking about. Yeah, in season one, the the first two episodes were just kind of overwhelmed with the guest stars, which was fine because they were great. But in this season, they weren't quite as overwhelming. Right. So even though they did great performances, I didn't feel like there was a letdown maybe – when we went to an episode that didn't have as like big a guest star mm-hmm. or as strong mm-hmm. a guest star, but they were all great. Yeah. So I like that. I also, like I said, I liked that there was a little bit more attention on the cops because in the first season, the final episode didn't have that really strong uh, storyline and guest star, and it just kind of fell apart and got really messy for me in the third episode. Yeah. But in this season, all the storylines were great. Like, they were all very compelling. I really enjoyed the writing. There was more character development of the police. Like, all the police were uh, the same from the last season, except for, like, one new guy who only dropped in in the first and final episodes. Mm -hmm. And we don't really know, I think, anything about him, but whatever. You know, it's fine. Um, So that was all very good. I I did think the writing was was better than the first season. Um, I thought it was more balanced than the first season. Mm -hmm. Having said that, okay, here we get ready, listener. <laughs> here we go. I got some stuff to say about this season. Hold on to your hat, listener. The first three episodes were like the most misogynistic pieces of crap I think I've wow. ever seen in my life. It was they wow. were totally written by men's rights activists. Yeah. It was like, how do women f men? Like, how do we just make men's lives completely horrible? Wow. Because the first episode with Sophie Okonedo. Mm-hmm. Uh, it turns out that her husband was gay and she killed two guys that he was interested in right. uh, to punish him and to frame him for it so he would go to prison. Mm-hmm. In, spoiler. Yeah, spoiler. So second episode, Kit Harrington is falsely accused of rape. Do you know how small the number mm-hmm. of like false allegations of rape is mm-hmm. in the u.s it's like two percent i'm not sure about the uk i can't imagine it's like 50 percent in the right, uk right. i'm like one of my big beefs with the criminal series is that the people being questioned are always guilty and this is the one time <laughs> they chose to make the person being questioned not guilty in the rape case mm-hmm. why would you do that why would you perpetrate or perpetuate the myth Mm -hmm. that false rape allegations are a thing that can happen at any time, anywhere, because they're common. They are not. Like, why would you do that? Mm -hmm. I understand you want to go for the twist ending, but don't do it with that episode. Mm -hmm. Like, as as an aside, the twist ending in the fourth episode I thought was really well done. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't done about rape. Mm -hmm. And then in the third episode... You have a lady who runs one of these uh, vigilante groups who's like going around trying to catch uh, pedophiles. pedophiles. And full disclosure, 
I, uh, I have some experience with this because I used to work with a guy who <laughs> was allowed to resign after he got busted by one of those vigilante websites talking <laughs> to who he believed was a 16-year-old boy. <sighs> so that has touched my life in a very tangential way. <laughs> but it turns out she busted a guy who wasn't an actual pedophile. Mm-hmm. She, it w- she did the math and lit the trail and yeah. thought it was him and actually it was a different guy. It turns out it was the guy's coworker using his computer. Sharing the computer, yeah. Yeah. So Spoiler. so then she goes like she goes down for impersonating somebody falsely on the internet or whatever. And I'm like, but then they never said what happened to the actual pedophile right. who was trying to meet this fourteen year old girl. Well they so, said he was in a cell downstairs. Uh, they had him. So I the first three episodes just made me so angry. Like we got halfway through the Kit Harrington episode and I said, if it turns out that this rape accusation <laughs> is false, like my head is going to freaking explode. She did actually, like, listener. She erupted during that uh, episode. Like I couldn't even handle it. I was like, I can't believe this is the way they're going. The one time, the one time somebody's not guilty is the rape. And then the final episode, I I liked it, actually. I thought it was very suspenseful. Mm-hmm. It didn't end the way I thought it was going to end. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was, But there was a reason why. I remember the reason why. I'm so angry about like the MRAs who wrote the first three episodes that I couldn't remember why I didn't like the fourth episode. The storyline was really well done. But they brought back the disgraced cop right. who got fired in the final episode of the first season for drinking on the job. Yeah. And he was still a cop. He's like a beat cop now, so he's not a detective. But I'm like... He was a Bobby. Yeah. I looked at Daltz, and I was like screaming in Daltz's face. I was like, how does this guy still have a job with the police when he was busted for drinking vodka on the job during an interrogation? And on camera. <laughs> of like a human trafficker in season... And Daltz is just sitting there just staring at the TV, and his face is red, and he's like, make her shut up, make her shut up. You know? <laughs> so like it, the first season... The final episode, just everything completely fell apart for me because the third episode was just so unrealistic with that guy drinking on the job, but they allowed him to finish the interrogation. It was just so unrealistic. And this episode, the same thing. Like, I really enjoyed that episode, but then they brought this hoser back (laughs) and... You know, and he's just like, oh, you know, I hope this saves my job. I hope I get my job back. And I'm like, you should be working at a Burger King. You were drinking on the job. Why are you even here? Oh, my God. I'm like, everybody has like the worst. Or a the- Pret-a-Manger or something like that. Exactly. Everybody's got the worst judgment ever. And final thing I'm going to say. Wow. The main lady cop, she's annoying and her wig is awful. There you go. Take it away, Dalt. So I don't have anything else to add. So for another week in the <laughs> podcast, I, uh, so... I don't disagree with anything you say because we're married, but you can, you can I don't have, you know, I don't want to disagree <laughs> because I'll disagree. be sleeping on the couch. But my, my point is that just because I thought it was brilliant doesn't mean I agree with what they did. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. well, I, I, I agree. Like, I thought that was brilliantly done. I know, I'm not saying that men are more often than not uh, guilty of rape right no i like the way it was done it made me yeah it made me it was a contrary way of doing it right and i i know what you're saying i i i appreciate that the episode was very well done yeah but just the fact that they made it a false rape accusation right. just right. completely overshadows everything else for me and ruins it like yeah. the yeah. final episode of the first season did where it just fell apart when the guy's drinking on the job and they right. let him finish the interrogation which is understandable so because yeah. you're a woman and i'm a man and it's a different dynamic in right. terms of rape and in terms of accusations and things like that and as it looks uh, in that episode there were the woman was trying to get a, a promotion a, a promotion and she right. was trying to sleep her way to the top and it's like that's a real trope i mean that's yeah. a complete uh cliche right and it doesn't really happen i mean and then it, she didn't get the promotion so she accused him of rape right and, and, and yeah. it's like that, that's a storyline from the 1970s but i like the way that they did it and i like the way that Kit Harrington. Kit Harrington was fantastic in that yeah. role because he was a dirtbag, uh-huh. but he was innocent, and so it, it you made him, it was a, it was the conflicting emotions that I felt is like this guy's guilty, this guy's guilty, this guy's guilty. Oh, he's not guilty, and then he was outraged at the end, and then they had to run him out of the out of the room, uh, you know, escort mm-hmm. him out with because he was so mad, and I could I, I felt for him even though he was a dirtbag, and that was how well. The perform- how good mm-hmm. the performance was and how well the 
episode was written. Now, I don't, I don't discount anything you said. Right. No, and I understand what you're saying. But because yeah. those are important issues, those absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I noticed that trend. I didn't notice it in the first one. You, you pointed it out just now, and now it, it, it pulls together for me for the third one, the three, three, the first three episodes. But the the second episode and the third episode, you have uh, definitely you have men getting the short end of the stick, and the women are uh, the ones who are guilty. And it's not really that case at all. Like the pedophilia, like pedophilia is rampant in on the internet, and and, and there's a lot of there's a lot of bad dudes out there, and I don't I don't think you can overreact to that kind of thing. Like you're you're watching these episodes, and you're like, oh yeah, you're just a guy, and he's reacting to a girl and but she's actually posing as a teenager and she's not a teenager and then and the cops there was entrapment and there was all sorts of interesting things there and the cops kept trying to put it back on that lady too they're like well his wife had a panic attack because of what you did and she's like no she had a panic attack because of what he did right like that's what all you know everybody always says that they're like well you did this it's like no if he's facing consequences it's because of his own actions right. so right. and they kept trying to put it and the end of that episode was weird, too, because it turned out that her children had been taken away by, like, Child Protective Services yeah. five years earlier because she kept saying, like, well, I'm a mom, I'm doing this, like, I you know, want my kids to be in a safe world. But mm-hmm. her kids had got taken away five years ago. And then it turns out she's some, like, QAnon believer thinking there's some, like, cabal of, like, child predators just running the world or something like she dropped that line at the end of it i'm like where did QAnon is did like a QAnon person write this episode like what's going on here it was crazy there was a lot of uh angst in that one and i and her performance was fantastic yeah because she was sitting at that table all cocky and through mm-hmm. the entire thing on as as a lot of these people do they feel like they're coming from a good intention a good place but when they're but the consequences of their actions are not really relevant. It's like, well, he would have done it anyway, or something. He's like, no, the law is the law, and here's how it works: is that it's either it's either he's either guilty or he's not guilty. It's not like, oh, he fell for my my trap. It's like, no, I mean, it was a trap. There, there's there's a lot of things there that have to fall into place. This guy was, as it turns out, this guy who uh, was falsely accused took bait along the way, but he was trying to give her the Heisman every now and then. <laughs> And it didn't work. And she kept at it and she kept at it because she was determined that this guy, so she was determining him to be guilty before, uh, rather than presuming him innocent. And I think that there was a, there was a message there in terms of let's, let's, we got a due process here and let's stick to it. Um, I, I think that it was just, this was just as good to me as the first season, the first UK season. Now, the UK season was one of the weaker ones, I thought, of the four that we watched. But it Definitely. was still brilliant, brilliantly written um, and still brilliantly acted. I mean, that, that's some of the best acting I've seen in a long, long time. All those villains in all four of these episodes that we just watched were fantastic, like I said. And this is the kind of thing that you you know, a lot of movies and a lot of shows have to have explosions and have to have <laughs> curse words and superheroes and everything like that. But this is like, this is what peak TV is all about to me is having the venue for this kind of stuff. Cause this is not going to end up on in another time in an earlier, more innocent time. This is not on NBC or CBS or anything like, like a dialogue driven right? one set essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. They're not out like, Checking crime scenes and right. digging up gardens and I mean, stuff. I mean, it's Law and Order, but it's it's just Law and Order done really well. I think like mm-hmm. Law and Order. I know you're a Law and Order fan in, in the past, but it it seemed to be too formulaic to me. Whereas this is not formulaic, even though it's a formula. Yeah, uh, and it seems different. Like if this were to be cast, you know, on NBC now, you'd have like Alec Baldwin showing up. <laughs> As the criminal, you know, and he'd be sitting across the table and, and there, you know, it'd be all sorts of celebrities around. It just wouldn't work. You know what it'd I mean? It'd be like Norm MacDonald as Burt Reynolds. Norm. Like, yeah. <laughs> what do you want? I didn't do it. <laughs> yeah. What else you want to know? Yeah. <laughs> so there's like, there's just, it, I'm, I'm a huge fan of this kind of thing. And I wish more people would watch this and make this the kind of number one show on, on Netflix and not necessarily some of the, you know, like due date and some of the other things that we're, we're, we're seeing <laughs> baby driver, baby driver <laughs> right. and, 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 and baby boss or whatever the, yeah you know, like some of these are fine and everything like that, but these are like important, interesting, uh, thought provoking 
shows that so the debate that we're having right now about this about these four episodes like those are important issues those are things that we should be talking about not necessarily uh, all the time and in these serious times that we're living in you don't want to be doing it all the time because it's it, we were living in a serious time but it's this is this is the kind of thing that really makes you think and really gets another perspective and the the acting and everything just makes it all worthwhile like the writing whether you believe it or not and when whether you um have uh, challenging issues like uh, Coco, which are reasonable <laughs> issues. Um, either way, it's provoking. It's something that makes you think and it makes you stand up and go, oh yeah, I never thought of it that way. Yeah, that's, that. I yeah. I, I think from now on for me, it's just going to be a hate watch because I, if, if there's a season three, like I... I want to see the like the Spanish and the German. Yeah, I still want to see other countries though. Like I think that yeah, bring back Germany and France. Those were so well done. They were far and away or better. Italy than, or Turkey yeah. or like you know, there's got to be some yeah, interesting Canada. Canada. I mean <laughs> Mexico, Bermuda. I don't know. Like let's <laughs> let's do a series. Like let's travel the world and yeah. do this. Yeah, Sweden, Sweden, Japan. For our listener in Sweden, uh, yeah. Japan. Exactly. Like mm-hmm. you can imagine all sorts of. Like that was what was fascinating to me about that first group in the first series was that you were able to see the due process in all those different countries and how it operated and how the the lawyers would sometimes would be in the room and sometimes they wouldn't be in the room. And sometimes the lawyers would be able to, you know, shut up and the lawyers would shut up and sometimes they'd be told to shut up and they wouldn't shut up. And and like the various dynamics there and all the things that the cops were able to do, it was just, it was fascinating to me. So I hope they do that again. Like I said, hate watch. So I'm watching it on my own is what you're saying. No, I'll watch it with you, but there might be yelling. (laughs) Should we watch it in like two different rooms at the same time? (laughs) It's not going to be like uh, season two of Goliath where like episode seven, I was like, I'm done. I'm done with the amputations. I'm done with the amputee porn. Like I'm I'm done. I was done with that too, but I had to watch the end of it. I was like, I couldn't couldn't get seven episodes into a nine episode show. I was like, yeah, I'm done. I don't care what happens. Like, well, now I'm sucked in. I got to watch this. And plus listener, it was a professional commitment that I had made to you. And it got renewed for season four. So I have a feeling we're going to be, yeah, we're going to be reviewing that whenever shooting can finally resume and that gets released. Well, I really liked uh, season one of Goliath. Not that this is a Goliath podcast, but uh, season one was good. Season two was terrible, like you said, but season three was pretty good. It wasn't as good as one, but it was still pretty good. Yeah. Season three was a bounce back from two, but not as good as one. But season two of Criminal, what do you think in comparison to season one? Well, if I'm only comparing UK to UK, yeah. So that would be apples to apples. Yeah. I would say this to me was more memorable. Oh, okay. And the performances stood up a little bit more and mm-hmm. and I would say also that that's significant because I was expecting a lot mm-hmm. because I had seen the the first season and I, the first season was like I had no idea what was going to happen. I came into it, you introduced it to me and I was like this is amazing. Like I hadn't seen it and I was blown away. And so now I had elevated expectations and it still was really good. I was still on the edge of my seat and I was still not not knowing what was going on. Like that's the biggest thing with me. We watch so many things. Yeah, we do. That you can predict what's going to happen with some reasonable certainty in <laughs> yeah. most cases. Occasions right. like, oh, we're watching a superhero movie. Oh, the superhero's not going to die. Well, right. <laughs> oh, the five astronauts going to Mars. Right. Yeah, they're they're not going to die. Like right. maybe they they're dehydrated on their way to Mars, but they're not going to die. They're going to get to Mars probably. Right. Yeah. So like, there's this reasonable uh, guarantee. Whereas this this show, even though like you said, the people that come in and are questioned are usually guilty, but it's how they get there that to me it's the journey. You know, it's about how the the clues are all put together and the, you know, the performances again, I can't say enough about the performances and the big bang theory guy like that. I was looking at him the whole time. I was like, where have I seen that guy from? <laughs> and of course I've watched Bing bag, big bag. The- oh, okay. Big <laughs> yeah, bang. Theory. Like, we're going to have to put an E for explicit on this <laughs> podcast now. <laughs> it's not just a theory. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can attest. <laughs> oh, there's a joke there, but we won't. Yeah, totally. The Big Bang Theory guy was amazing. And now I have new respect for him because his performance, especially in the first 10 yeah. minutes of that episode, it was just outstanding. You believed that that guy was crazy and was gonna was capable of killing somebody. So uh, I don't think I answered your question, actually, Coco. So uh, I like this one better just because I had higher expectations and it met those higher expectations which is very rare how about Mm -hmm. you i 
the quality of this season, I feel like overall is better than the quality of the first season. Mm -hmm. Because I'll say it again, the first two episodes of the first season were just freaking amazing because of David Tennant and Haley Atwell. And then the the third episode was like a noticeable shambolic drop off. This The trucker guy was good. Is that the trucker guy you were talking about? Yeah. I thought that wasn't too bad. Well, I've... Okay, we won't talk about that. Okay. Anyways, this season, I felt like the quality was steady across the board. Right. It yeah. was, all the guest performances were good. There, you know, there was more of character development of the cops. Uh, there was more, um, just the writing was good. Like, there were some twists. I feel like the quality of this season is better, but because of, you know, the misogynist stuff in the right. first three yep. episodes and then the uh the bringing the drunk back to interrogate you know, <laughs> a guy again in the in the final episode i'm like i just can't i can't get on board with it yeah so. but overall i felt the quality was better of this season than the first so your letter grade <sighs> you go first so i'm gonna give this uh well i'm gonna give this two full pen caps up because i i really I really liked it. I knew that was coming. Two microphones up, two uh, hidden cameras up, two pizza boxes up. It was really good. Mm -hmm. It was full marks. Yeah. Wow. Full marks. (laughs) Am I sleeping on the couch tonight? (laughs) Again? Uh, Or maybe in the shed? (laughs) (laughs) No, I'm usually the one who sleeps on the couch because of the dog. Right, but not the shed, listener. No, not the shed. Uh, I just, I don't know. I'm going to... C plus? I'm going to, I don't know. I'm going to punt this. No, no letter grade. I think I'm. I, I don't think I can give it a letter grade. Like a dash. <laughs> <laughs> like this, if this is it's, a. It's an incomplete. How about that? Yeah. It's an incomplete. If this was a report card, you'd have a dash there. <laughs> It'd be an incomplete. So yeah. we'd be meeting with the principal. Well, so, I mean, I could be like F for feminist, but. <laughs> 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 but I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'll just give it an incomplete. Okay. Well, that's fine. I. Uh, <laughs> I still. Uh, I think in closing, I'd like to vote for the uh, Canadian version of criminal. And what I'd like to see is the first episode is Bob and Doug on the other side of the table <laughs> because they stole that truck full of beer right, in Strange be Brew. Oh, that'd be so awesome. And, and the RCMP is on the other side of the table and they're like, <laughs> just admit it, eh? And then Bob and Doug are like, yeah, we did it, eh? And then it would be like a four minute episode and then they'd be sitting around c- cracking beers and smoking. It could be like the guy from Due South is like interrogating Bob and Doug. You could have like, <laughs> right. you know, Canadian pop cultural world melding. And, and then like... the second episode would be Bone Cop, Bad Cop yes. on one side of the table. Oh my God. And then on the other side of the table would be like Kids in the Hall or something like that. Can we please make this happen, Netflix? Can you please email us at cocoandalts at gmail.com and give us a writing contract for Criminal Canada because... We've got it made here. We'll take you up on that. And it should be animated. Part of it should be animated. Oh, I don't know about (laughs) that. Like one character over at the side, like Captain Canuck or something like that, is in the chair, in the cop chair. No, he's behind the mirror. He's behind the mirror. <laughs> How about we just have like a blow up Captain Canuck? See, now they're not going to give us a contract because you want <laughs> like I an animated animation. Ca- Captain Canuck. I know some people who could animate it. I actually have some very talented friends. So speaking of how you can contact us, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter at Coco and Dalts. You can find us on the interwebs at CocoAndDalts.com to find reviews of the things we don't talk about on the podcast. And if you want to listen to us on your podcast platform of choice, we are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, Stitcher, SoundCloud, TuneIn, Google Play, YouTube, IMDb, Ghana, if you're in India, and allegedly Amazon slash Audible. So if you have like an Audible Plus account, I believe, you can find us on there. Let us know what you think of the podcast, what you want us to review in the future, what you think of stuff we've reviewed in the past. Let us know. Reach out and touch someone. And let us know what country uh, should be the next in the criminal series and who should be the starring criminal. I like it. I think there's a lot of potential there. Netflix, call us. Yes, exactly. And thanks for listening to us, listener. We appreciate it. Uh, For another week of the podcast, I'm going to try to get this right. I'm not Coco. And I'm not Dalts. 